Hello Bright Owls! Welcome to day 22 of Storytelling 101. Today we are going to talk about acts. Acts are a form of story structure and this is where you break your story up into different sections called acts and each one has a different purpose. There are several different types of act structures but I am going to be mostly talking about the three act structure because that is the most commonly used one. Your acts are divided by turning points, which are changes in the status quo. They are points of no return. Am I the only one who thinks of the Phantom of the Opera when you hear point of no return? Let me know in the comments if you also think of the Phantom of the Opera. So I'm going to go ahead and break down the three act structure for you. Act one is the beginning. This is where you introduce your characters and set up the story, and then you go into your inciting incident. And this is your introduction to the conflict and the character's decision to do something about the conflict. So for example, in a romance, your inciting incident is when the protagonist meets the love interest. Now this might be immediately followed by them deciding to pursue that love interest, or there might be a little bit of time in between when they meet them, and when they decide to pursue them, in which case you kind of have two inciting incidents. In an adventure story, your protagonist is going to have the opportunity to go on an adventure, which is the inciting incident, and then they are going to decide whether or not to go on that adventure, which is that decision-making point. So for example, in The Hobbit, the dwarves all show up and Bilbo is offered the opportunity to go on an adventure. That's the inciting incident. Now there's a little bit of time that passes in between the dwarves showing up and when Bilbo actually decides to go on the adventure and that is the more secondary inciting incident that launches him into the story. Once your character makes the decision to do something about the conflict that has been presented to them, that is when you get propelled into Act 2 and that is the middle of your story. You wanna start act two by fulfilling whatever promise you made. If you promised adventure, show your character exploring the dangerous jungle. If you promised romance, show the couple bonding. That's what you're gonna do at the beginning of act two. And all the while, the conflict is going to escalate. This is also called the rising action. Halfway through act two, you're gonna have the midpoint, and this is a big turning point where things start to go downhill. This is where all the bad things start to happen, and that's what the second half of Act 2 will be, is all these bad things happening as you are propelling your character towards the end. And at the end of Act 2, your character will make some sort of irreversible decision that will propel them towards the climax. Act 3 is your end, and this is where you have the climax, which is the final battle between the protagonist and antagonist, or whatever is the cause of the main conflict, and your character will either win or lose. That is followed by the denouement, which is the resolution, that's where you wrap things up, show the consequences of the climax, etc., and then you will end on your finale or final image. The Save the Cat plot beats are really applicable to the three-act structure, so if you are a person who likes to outline, you can look at the Save the Cat plot beats and that will help you outline and it fits the three-act structure really well. If you are a discovery writer and you don't do outlines, you can look at these beats in your revisions to help you stay on track. The three-act structure will help you make sure that your revisions are working out and that your story has structure to it. If you want to know a more complex act structure, I highly recommend watching Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That is a seven act movie. So you should watch it and see if you can figure out where all the turning points are and that will help you learn the act structure. This is really commonly used in screenwriting, so you can use pretty much any film and look for the act divisions and that'll help you better understand how acts work. That's all I have for you today on acts. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I will answer them either as a reply or in the Q&A on Saturday. I will go more into detail into each of the acts in the next three days. So if you have questions about what happens in each act, hold off and see if I answer them in my future lessons that will be coming up in the next couple of days. I have two discussion questions for you today. The first one is how many acts are in your story or do you think will be in your story if you haven't written it yet? And two, 
Did you find all the turning points in Indiana Jones? Let me know. I'm excited to see your answers. I hope you all have an awesome day.